this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. So we're still going with the hymn book, so you've got one there in front of you. If you're in the back, you've got one under your chair. Grab you a hymn book and turn to number one. Hymn number one, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let's sing out as we sing on verse one. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Now we're going to sing the third verse as the last. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Amen. Now turn to number 32. And when you get that, get your spot there, stand with me. And we will sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. You're fine. Go ahead and start over. We're good. We're waiting on you. <laughs> We're not going to start without you. because of the uh, there's kind of been a COVID ramping back up in the middle Georgia area we're gonna I know we've been doing the handshaking time and I really enjoy it but uh, I know y'all do too for the most part but we're just gonna let you wave at each other and, and just uh, be, be be cognitive of being trying to be safe and healthy we've got hand sanitizer in the back uh, there should be some in the hall down here as well I imagine 90 percent of y'all have it on your person somewhere in your purse or in your pocket so just make sure you're using that but it's good to see you let's uh, let's have a word of prayer and then you can have a seat father we thank you for the opportunity to be together thank you for the time we can gather together we just ask that you would bless our service now as we sing and worshiping to you and then lord as we uh, open up the word of god here shortly that you you would just speak through our hearts thank you in advance for how you're going to do that we pray for those that couldn't be with us that you would minister to them and just meet them where they are or just draw us all closer to you we ask it in christ's name amen you may be seated All right, 
So a few, uh, so I welcome you to Hardison. I'm glad you're here. And then a few announcements we have is um, the ladies outing. Uh, it's not the, the details are not determined yet, but that's going to be on the 21st of August. And then the 28th is uh, the Camo Men's Conference in Dublin from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Does the let uh, myself or, or Miss Kathy in the office know by uh, the 22nd, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we get a, a group that can go. I think a couple, three of them went last year, but um, Justin, I know, was one of them, and he said it was a really good conference, so uh, definitely for you guys. And the CAMO stands for Calling All Men Out, so it's uh, an encouraging, but also I'm sure there's going to be some toes stepping on, So, but uh, looking forward to that, and just pray that you can make it if you can. Uh, Labor Day is coming up as well. Hard to believe it. The unofficial end of summer. But uh, happy birthday to Miss Beverly Smith is today. So happy birthday, Miss Beverly. And then uh, to Bill Barber is tomorrow. So uh, let them know you wish them a happy birthday. And then Vern and Phyllis have an anniversary this week. I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask him. Brother Vern, how many years is it? Is that right? Hey, he was already practiced up. Uh, he had he'd already taken off his shoes and counted, so he was good to go. But uh, 54 years, so praise the Lord for that. It's now they, you know, 54 years, and he sits in the back and she sits in the front. Y'all know how it make how they make it work. So <laughs> just messing. He's back there doing our ushering, and we appreciate him for that. But uh, so that's the announcements we have. Um, thank you for the allowing us to postpone the men's cookout from this past Friday. Uh, so it's a a lot going on in our family's life and, and things going on right now. Just continue to pray for, for us and, and for my parents with all this going on there. And uh, I'd love to update you a little bit later if you'd like. All right, so take your hymn books. We, we kind of can't sing this one seated. So 115. Uh, 115, Love Lifted Me. So you got to stand, you got to stand. We can't sing it seated. <laughs> I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. third souls in danger look above jesus completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's the master of the sea will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today love lift Lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted. All right, and the last uh, congregational, 293, while you're standing. <clears throat> when I survey the wondrous cross, I'm so thankful for the cross, but what represents our salvation there, and what Jesus Christ did for us so willingly. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss, and for contempt on all my pride. Did Lord that I 
You may be seated. I forget to mention, and I apologize for that, that um, <clears throat> the offering chest is in the back. And so if you bring in a, a physical offering, because sometimes people give it online as well, but you can put your offering in the treasure chest in the back. It's still, again, another COVID thing, just trying to keep from you know, passing the plates and things like that. But it's definitely, I um, want you to give you that opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving and uh we just So you've got that in the back, or you can give online at hardisonbaptist.org. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to get the tune. I just My brain just went out on me, so y'all just hang in there. So it's fun. I've still got one hour survey. I should just sing that one. I've still got one hour survey, the wondrous cross stuck in my head. So... Uh, <laughs> Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that the Lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Take your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 1.
we've been going through Philippians and seeing just how uh, what Paul is trying to encourage the uh, church at Philippi with. And <clears throat> last week we um, saw how Paul tried to encourage, uh, reaffirm the the church at Philippi that uh, in verses 12, 13, and 14 that the fact that he was in prison was okay. The fact that he was in this place where a lot of people would think this is not okay, he said it is okay. And because I'm here, the gospel is going somewhere that it wouldn't have gone if I hadn't been here. And we looked at how sometimes in our life, things happen, things go on in our life that cause us to wonder, God, what's going on? I said to you last week, I don't like preaching these kind of messages because a test is coming. Most of you know, my dad had a stroke on Tuesday morning and it left his whole left side paralyzed. He's been in the hospital since about 5.30 Tuesday morning, stayed in the ER a little over, or, or about 36 to 40 hours, and then they were able to get him a room in the a neuro ICU. And he's, he's still there in the ICU. You know, but how do we handle these things when they come? How do we, what do we say to God? How, what is our reaction? You ever heard somebody say that? You know, you can tell a true character by your reaction to things, to how you respond to things. Um, I know I've failed that test many times. Somebody pulls something on me or, 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 or uh, accuses me or something, and I, I, and I know I'm innocent or whatever that fact might be. But you know what? God is sovereign. Libby reminds us that often on Wednesdays, how she enjoys the sovereignty of God. And I think we all do, just maybe without realizing it. But God is sovereign. We talked about forest fires last week, how... Uh, the Lord uh, allows them to go through these national parks and whatnot, and, but they can as much destruction as they can cause, they cause good stuff too. And like that, in our lives, <clears throat> none of us would order a forest fire for the most part. I know they do control burns and things, but in our lives, we wouldn't say, hey Lord, I think I'm ready. Could you send me that big test this week? Hey Lord, I'm 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 uh, I'm I've been uh, I've been working out a lot. I've been praying a lot. I've been reading my my Bible a lot. I've memorized twelve verses this week. So bring it. <laughs> and we won't do that. First of all, we're not supposed to tempt our Lord, and just know that it's coming. He tests us. Why does he test us? To grow us to allow us to be drawn closer to Him. Of course, that's our choice. But here Paul is, he's in the, he's in prison, and he's, he's having this battle. Uh, the, the Philippian church thinks he is. But he says, you know, I'm here for a reason. God's got me right where He wants me, and I'm just going to do my best right here. Let's start reading in verse 15. Philippians chapter 1, verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So we'll look at this for just a few minutes before we read further into Philippians chapter 1. Paul says, you know, there are people that are preaching the gospel out of envy and strife. I can't, I can't wrap my brain around that completely, that somebody wants to do that. And it's almost like they just want to do it to spite Paul. Hey, Paul's in prison. Let me, let's show him that we can still be out here preaching, and we can still be doing what... 
what uh, we're supposed to do. Well, that, that's, that's a bad motivation, isn't it? You know, I'm going to do something just because I'm going to do it because it'll make him jealous. Or I'll gain more followers while he's in prison by doing something as like preaching the gospel. I do not doubt that there are preachers in this land, in this world today, that preach with the wrong motivation. I don't doubt that. That's a weird thing to do with the wrong motivation, I'll admit. Maybe they're motivated by the crowds. Maybe they're motivated by the, 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 the fact that you know <clears throat> they get to be the one up front. They get to be the one talking about uh, their life and things that the Lord's doing with it. Maybe they, get, maybe they like the limelight. I don't know. But they, I do believe people preach from pulpits all across the, the country and the world with the wrong motivation. Now look at what Paul says. This is pretty cool. He says in verse 16, The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. In verse 18, he says, What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached? And I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Paul says, the fact of the matter is, Christ is preached. It's almost like he's saying, you know, their motivation is not that important. The fact of the matter is, they're preaching the gospel. I believe we can see that <clears throat> this, is also, this is not a, the, a, a distortion to the gospel. Listen to Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Paul was writing there to the, the church in uh, Galatia, and he says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, that which, we have, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Verse 9 says, As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Two verses in a row that he says, If anybody is preaching something other than what I've preached to you, whether it's me or an angel, let them be accursed because that's not the truth. You know, how, how can we know the truth when it comes to somebody preaching the gospel? How can we know the truth? How, how can we know the truth? Well, you know, when I was in college, I heard it. Uh, I heard somebody say it. I'm just gonna, I was in college, and I remember uh, Jim Shetler. He was the pastor of the campus church. He also taught our ministerial uh, seminar class when, you know, off and on with different people um, throughout the semesters. Well, he said, uh, I remember him saying, guys, whenever you hear the gospel, whenever you hear the Bible taught, you shouldn't just take it at face value. You should go and study it for yourself. Make sure that that person was preaching or teaching the right thing. And I remember thinking, what? Why would, I, why would I do that? I can't trust you? Is what I was thinking. But you know what? We teachers can get confused or sidetracked or whatnot, and sometimes we could give you something that's not correct. I'm not saying that I am. You know, I'm, hit, I'm hiding a false error in, <laughs> in this message. You would get a candy bar if you find it. Uh, you know, but it's that part of we should... How do, we, how do we know the right gospel? Well, Paul taught it, right? That's what he was telling. If it's anything other than I've taught you, what did they have when Paul was teaching the gospel? What did those, those believers have that could, that could justify it, that could ratify it? They had the Old Testament, the Scriptures. And he says, don't just take my word for it. You need to, you need to study it. You need to know it for yourself. And he says, if anyone preach any other gospel, let them be accursed. But then he says, going back to Philippians, remember he said, hey, basically, it doesn't matter what their motivation is. The fact of the matter is the gospel is preached. And God can use it. So they weren't, pre whoever was doing this, preaching out of contentions and strife, they weren't doing a false gospel, or I believe he would have called them out. 
just I take it I can take a hint from Paul's other uh, uh, epistles that I think he would have called them out. But instead, he said, "Either way, it's a win-win." They're doing it trying to trying to get at me, trying to eat at me. But you know what? It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, the gospel is preached. But notice here, check this out. Look across the page in, in chapter 2. So he's not just saying, you know, we're going to get to this eventually, of course, in another month or two. I'm just kidding. Um, but he says in chapter 2, verse 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on, the, on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So we have to be careful. Now, he doesn't address it in chapter 1, but in chapter 2, he addresses the motivation to what we're doing. What is our motivation? He says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others, other better than themselves. Uh, I had a, a teacher in college, Dr. Busey, who said that this verse was not to be used during tests like in class test, because it says, Miss Donna, you'll like this one. He says, uh, don't go, don't go uh, quoting Philippians 2.4 when it comes time for a test. He says, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. <laughs> <laughs> so got to be careful with that. You know, people take Scripture out of context. They can say they can just look next door and see what the other person wrote on their test. No, no, no. Keep it in context. But Paul here in Philippians in chapter 1, he's saying that the gospel is being preached, and that's what's important. Because when the gospel is preached, people hear the word of God, and it changes their lives, if they allow it to. Verse 19, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now, I, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Verse 21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Verse 19, he says, look, he's, when he says salvation, he's not talking about his salvation from his sins. He's just saying, I know I'm going to be I'm going to be released from this prison. This is, you know, God's got a plan for me. I'm, I'm going to be redeemed from here. And it's because of your faithful prayers and because of my Lord and Savior who, can, who sustains me every day. What about you? Two things on this note, on this verse, or three things, I guess. Two on the first part. Do you pray for someone like they're praying for Paul? You have somebody you pray for like that? And then... Second side of that coin is, are you prayed for by someone like that? Um, <clears throat> this was just, uh, it just blew me away. It's been several years ago. Um, uh, I think most of you know Dale and Ed Chambliss, and, and such a, an awesome, awesome man and woman of God. Love the Lord tremendously. I serve the Lord at Mikado down the street here. <clears throat> well, he was a, uh, He's an associate pastor or assistant pastor or something. Sorry, Brother Chambliss, if I'm getting it wrong, I apologize. So, uh, <clears throat> just an awesome man. I, I, I met and got to know Ed Chambliss when I went to college. I went to college at Pensacola Christian College in 1996. And when I got down there, <clears throat> excuse me, my roommate, uh, Neil Gardner, was, uh, went to church with him here. And then um, he, but he went to church with, uh, or went to school, I'm sorry, with, uh, with Ed Chambliss's son, Matt Chambliss. Well, I didn't know Matt. Turns out we're the same age. I'm a, I'm a month older than he is. And uh, it turns out we went, to, we went to church here at Hardison when we were kids. Uh, my dad would take me out and spank me, and then Ed would take Matt out and spank him about the same time. It was pretty neat. I don't remember that part, but I've been told many stories and it's been validated uh, because I was apparently not behaving. So, uh, <clears throat> well, anyway, I got to... So I met Matt at, at college, um, and my, my roommate, Neil, said, hey, I got the, we're, we're planning a trip home like about a month into college, and uh, Brandy was still here, so I had high motivation to come home. I wanted to be uh, see my mom and dad, but I wanted to be with my, my uh, girlfriend. Then she was my girlfriend. Um, 
fiance was later on that year. But so Neil said, hey, I got this guy that lives around us that would love to go home because his girlfriend's at home you know, in middle Georgia too. I'm like, nah, I don't like meeting new people. And he said, uh, <clears throat> just think about it. He'd really like to go and he doesn't have a car. So I decided during the week, all right, fine, whatever. So uh, it was going to be Neil and his girlfriend, both from middle Georgia, and then uh, me and Matt. Well, I just didn't want to get to know somebody. I'm not an extrovert. I like to just kind of keep to myself, so to speak. And so anyway, we go over. Uh, I'm supposed to meet him in the bottom of his, his dormitory, and he's supposed to be waiting on me at the bottom. And as I walk through there, my truck is parked. The, the, my sign spot was outside of his dormitory. And as I go through, I'm not happy about the situation, but it, it is what it is at this point. And I remember I come through. Y- y'all know Matt. He's <laughs> Bruce is no, he's not as tall as I am. So he's he's a shorter guy, not a little guy. He's a shorter guy, and he he's just standing there with his book bag like this. And I come through and I said, "You Chambliss," and he goes, "Yeah." All right, let's go. <laughs> we went and got in the truck, went and picked up Neil and Stephanie, and he and I talked the entire way home. The second time we went home, uh, or it might have been that time, it might have been that time, we got so lost, a five-hour trip took eight hours. It was terrible. But this was before, Stephanie, but this was before GPSs and, and, and phones, so you're like, how'd you get lost? Your phone would never, yeah, no, no. I had a bag phone. Y'all remember those? Yeah, plugged in cigarette lighter and what cigarette? I don't know why they call it a cigarette. Nobody uses that for lighting cigarettes anymore. It's, it's used for charging your phone. So I, you know, you know, it's got a cord to it. You know, it was great. But anyway, so I, I got to know Matt Chambliss that way. Met his dad. Got to know them very well. I really enjoy getting to know him. But this is what I was getting at. About five or six, seven years ago, uh, about seven, eight years ago. I'm sorry. Uh, took some, went over to Ed Chambliss's house to take some food. Uh, Matt and them were going through some stuff with their, their youngest daughter with the cancer and all. Uh, that Now, praise the Lord, she's cancer-free. But we took some food over, or Bradley and I did, and Mr. Chambliss came out and met us at the garage. And He's such a, he's such a personable person. He's very, very just personable, very sincere. And he came out, and he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, Bryant, I pray for you every day. I said, what? Man, it just didn't register. I was, what? He said, I pray for you every day. What? I never had somebody tell me that before. But boy, it was uplifting. It, it just overtook me of, whoa. That's pretty cool. That's pretty powerful. Do you pray for someone often? Have you ever had somebody tell you they pray for you often? It's encouraging. And that's what Paul says here. He says, hey, because of your faithful prayers and the abundant supply of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'll be out of here. I'm doing His will in here right now, but I'll get out. I'll have my salvation from this prison. And he says, that's what, that's what we should do. We should be that earnest prayer encourager for someone. Verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He says, you know, I'm in prison and this is, it, it doesn't look good for a lot of prisoners. Uh, Paul knew that, that there was a time coming for himself and for every other human, minus the folks that are here when the rapture happens. He knew that, that a time of death was coming. And he says, look, God's got, I'm paraphrasing here, he says, God's got a plan for me. And I pray that my, my, my life can be glorifying to him in life, While I'm living, while I'm doing, we talked about that in Sunday school of our works. Our faith should produce works. Not works that save us, not works that keep us saved, but works that show people that we're saved. And I asked this question to the Sunday school class. I said, 
What if someone were to ask you, does your life show your faith? What would you say? Well, don't answer now, but you know my point is, think about it. Or are you that person that if you told a coworker or someone tomorrow, hey, I'm just going to tell you that I know Lord Jesus Christ is my personal Savior, and I'm going to heaven when I pass away, and I'm excited about it, I'm proud of it, what would their reaction be? Would they go, really? What? You're, you're, but you, I don't get it. Or would they say, yeah, I figured so. I could see that. I, I kind of picked up on that you go to church and stuff. No, 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 no. It's not just church, buddy. It, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I just wanted to tell you because I want you to know that you can have one too. How would they receive it if you said that to them tomorrow or today? Not your waitress after church. Now tell her that. That's not a bad thing. But she doesn't know you. So she'd just be like, good. Would you like sweet tea or Coke? You know? But as people that know you, how would they react if you said, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ? Paul said, whether in life, I want Christ to be glorified in my life, or in death, I want Christ to be glorified in my death. And he says, for, me to, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We've got some loved ones that have passed away. We all do. And while their death may not have felt like a gain to us, it was for them if they knew Christ as their Savior. Now, do they miss being here with us? I, I think so. If they, could, if they could pull themselves out of worshiping their Heavenly Father for just one nanosecond, they could go, I miss them. But this is so much better. And they're going to be here with me soon, but I'm here. And I wouldn't give this up for the world. You know, what does our life show? Well, what will our death show as well? Now, sometimes you think, well, the, uh, the measure of how much your life was impactful is how full was the chapel, the church, or the cemetery. Um, to some degree, that is a point. That is a good point. Um, but that's if, if it wasn't, if you know someone that passed away and, they, and it wasn't full, it doesn't mean that they didn't have a full life. They didn't mean, it doesn't mean they didn't impact people. You know, this past year has been a good example of that. Lots of COVID funerals that have been very low attended. You know, Brother Hart passed away. I think this church would have been packed to the gills because he was a teacher here, had a great impact on a lot of people. But because of COVID, the family decided to have a private ceremony. And that's okay. It really is. But what is it? What about your life? Because we're all still living right now. At 12, at 1139 on August 1st, 2021, we're all still here with us, I think. Yeah, I think so. All right, we're all still alive. Only a few of y'all are nodded off. That's good. But we're still here. What about our life is glorifying to the Lord? What is it that, that we do on a daily basis that shows that we're saved? What about our life is our works? How, do, how does our life prove that we're a Christian? Paul says, whether by, <clears throat> whether by life or by death, I want my life to glorify Him. And I think that's a great goal to attain to, a great thing to strive for so that others can be, can, can be, be pointed to our Savior because of our life and definitely because of our death. You know, Paul is not afraid to die. He is prepared, and that makes all the difference in the world. When This is a thought I have. When people are afraid to die or are afraid of the thought of death, then I don't believe they're prepared for death. 
They may try to skate around it, but the fact of the matter is they aren't 100% sure of whatever they are trusting in to get them to heaven when their heart stops beating. They may be faithful church members here or somewhere else. They may do work in soup kitchens. They may do a lot of things that are good works. But if they're afraid of death, in my opinion, they're trusting in something that they're not 100% sure will get them to heaven when their life ends. What is that thing that gives me that 100% guarantee? I don't have any doubt. I don't have any doubt of where I will spend eternity. And the reason is I place my faith in Christ and His finished works and Christ alone. I don't trust in... I was baptized behind those doors right there uh, my freshman year of college. I don't have any faith in that. Uh, <laughs> Brother Odom forgot to... Or I don't know if he forgot or if it just didn't turn on the little thing and it was January, the little water heater thing. Got put it in the, got to put it in the night before to warm that big old probably I don't know 100, 200, 200, probably 200 gallons of water, and it was January and he's wearing these waders, and he's like, "Whew, it's cold." As I'm coming down the steps, he's like, "Yeah, I guess the heater didn't work last night." And I'm like, <laughs> "He's already announced that the doors are open. There's no turning around at this point. Uh, it was cold." But as I go down in it, I'm like, oh my goodness, you got to be kidding me. Oh, well, you know, some say baptized by fire, baptized by ice is about the same thing, you know. But that's not what I have my faith in. I don't say, well, on, I don't even remember the date. Sometime in January of 1997, I was baptized. And from that day, glory, hallelujah, I don't have any faith that that saved me. Because it didn't. But what I do have 100% faith in is the Savior that died for me that said, Whosoever will, come unto me. I will in no wise cast out. No man can pluck him out of my hand. John chapter 3, verse 16. We all know this verse. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should have a pretty good, maybe long-lasting if you behave and act right life. That's not what it says. It doesn't say uh, you'll have uh, life until you sin again. It says everlasting life. I'm thankful for that. Because if it were up to me to keep me saved, I'd be in trouble. I'd be in big trouble. I asked a friend of mine, and we were talking in high school. Um, he was of, the, of another belief system, and uh, I'll just say it. He was Catholic, and I'm not picking on Catholic. It's just, just a story I'm telling you. And he said, uh, we were talking in the weight room, and we were talking about salvation. He said, oh, well, I go to confession every Saturday. Oh, okay, cool. It's weird. You know, what's that about? I, I, weird to me because I've never done it as far as going into a booth and saying it. And to somebody else on the other side of a curtain, I've seen it on TV a bunch and all that. He's like, "Oh yeah, you just go in there and you, Father, I've sinned. Forgive me for I've sinned, and, and do all these things." And he tells you what to do or whatever, or what to, how to pray or whatever to, to be resolved or whatever those sins. I was like, processing. I'm an 18 year old kid processing this in the weight room, and I'm like, "So, oh, you said Saturday. So, what happens, Tony, if you?" die in a car wreck on Friday and you haven't been to confession since last Saturday. And he was like, go to hell, I guess. I was like, whoa. Well, that's not how I believe. I share the gospel with him. And then we went back to pumping iron. You know, he called me like five or six years later and we went and had uh, uh, lunch uh, at Olive Garden in Macon. And he was like, Griffey, I just want you to know that I've placed my faith in Christ and it's because of you. And I'm like, me? He was my, we were called the bookends. We were defensive ends in, in football on defense and, and we, we were, my dad titled us the bookends. We kept it all contained. And I'm like, bro, what? We played football together. What's the, and baseball, what, what? He said, no, you remember that day in the weight room? And he told me, reminded me, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. He's like, that just kept 
rolling over in my head. And we also, we gave him a Bible when he, when he graduated high school. He was a year under us. But Brandy and I thought, it must be cool. Give him a Bible. You know why? Because they're not encouraged to have a Bible. If you need to know what the Scripture says, you just go let the priest tell you. Well, I, don't, I don't believe in that. I believe that our priest is Jesus Christ. And we should just, he's given us his word, so it's not in some translation. It's right there for us to read. And so we gave him a Bible, and, and did he read it? I hope so. But you know, he was trusting in the wrong thing. And you know what? There's only one right thing. You know how narrow-minded that is? Have you heard people say that before? Maybe not to you, but on TV or on the internet or something, they just go, Christians are narrow-minded. There are many ways to heaven. I went to a, gracious, I couldn't believe this. So my senior year, I went to a Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I'm not knocking the group, but this particular morning, I went to a Fellowship of Christian Athletes, had been witnessing to this guy that was a big old burly guy on our team, just trying to share the gospel with him. He's very rough around the edges. Not very receptive to it, but I did convince him to go with us, me and a couple of other guys, to Fellowship of Christian Athletes on this Saturday morning. Excuse me. We went up off of some uh, some motel where you know I have like a meeting room, and we had pancakes and eggs and things on a Saturday morning. And there, there's his name's Dana. He was there with us. Man, he was just chowing down. We we're all having a good time. And then this guy gets up to to do the devotional um, of a Catholic background. Sorry, it seems like I'm sorry, God, I'm picking on Catholics this morning. It's just where the stories are coming from. And he said, there are many ways to heaven. And the way I've chosen is to do my best at everything I do. I about dropped my fork. I have been witnessing to this guy, trying to share the gospel with him. And now there's this person who, I think he was a, a college quarterback from a local school in town who seems to be an authority because they've given him a, 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 the, the time to speak. And he stands up and says, there are many ways to heaven, and the way I chose is to do my best at everything I do. Man, I was just... You're talking about being deflated. I'd shared the gospel with him because, you know what, the gospel is narrow. Broad is the way, the Bible says, says that leads to destruction. And many there be that go that way. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. But narrow or straight is the gate that leads to life everlasting. John chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father who's in heaven but by me. What are we trusting in? Facebook watchers, what are you trusting in? If we're afraid of death or the thought of death, you might want to check up. You want to make sure that you are trusting in Christ and Christ alone, that you have asked Him to forgive you of your sins. And, and knowing, I say ask, you shouldn't even have to ask because He will. Confess your sins to Him and He forgives. He doesn't say, you're older and you've committed a lot of sins. I'm going to have to think on that for a few days. He doesn't do that. We do. We as humans do. If somebody asks us to forgive them, we go, I'll have to get back with you on that. Well, first of all, shame on us. Oh, but you don't know the hurt they did to me, Bryant. Oh, I don't. But I know I cut my Savior deep every day when I sin. And He forgives me. We confess our sins to Christ and He will forgive us. It says that our name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. It won't be blotted out because we placed our faith in Him and Christ alone. What are you trusting in? If you're not 100% sure of your eternal destination, then make sure you check up. Talk to me. Talk to Brother Vern. Talk to Brother Bob. To talk to somebody. Get that settled. Don't let it be something that you're leaving here going, I think I'm okay. There's no shame in making sure you have assurance of your salvation. If you do leave from this building or from this episode, I call it whatever, of, of Facebook, and you aren't sure, 
then guess what? Satan won the battle. He got you to go, well, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll be all right. I'm pretty, yeah, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm good, pretty sure. Well, as long as we have doubts, we can't be effective for Christ, and we don't know for sure where, our, where we'll be in eternity. Um, just this week, the brevity of life, guys. A 15-year-old boy was practicing football on Monday. Y'all have seen it on the news. He didn't get up and go to practice that day and say, I'm, Mom, I'm probably not coming home this evening. I'm, I, may, I may be passing away today. He didn't know. Also this week, a senior in high school at Stratford Academy was struck by lightning earlier this earlier in July in, in down in South Florida. Y'all have heard the news. He passed away this week. 17 years old. We're, we're not exempt from the hand of death. But we can be prepared. We can be ready to meet our Savior, to meet our Maker. And if we're not, the Bible is very clear that there are only one of two places we'll spend eternity. And it all hinges on what we do with Christ. Do we place our faith in Christ and Christ alone? Or do we say, I got this. I'm good. Appreciate it, though. Will our li- do our lives glorify God right now? And will our death glorify God when that comes? Think about it. Definitely think about what in the world, how are we, how are we living? You know, on Wednesday nights, a plug for Wednesday nights, and then we're going to close. We're going through the book of Luke, and I'm just amazed at seeing all these cool things in the book of Luke. Right now we're in Luke chapter 8. This past week, we looked at Luke 8, uh, 19 through 21. I won't reteach the message, but verse 21 says this. And he answered and said unto them, that's Jesus, Look at the, the, well, let me back up, give a little history. So verses 19 and 20 is where the, the, Jesus is teaching. There's a bunch of people around him, and his mom and brethren come up and, and can't get to him to say they want to see him. And somebody came up to Jesus and interrupted him or whatnot and said, hey, your mom and brethren are out there, and they want to see you. And this is what Jesus said, Luke chapter 8, verse 21. My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. This is a side note from the message, but it goes along with every message you ever hear taught. Every time you read your Bible, what are you doing with the Word of God? Do you just hear it? Because you just heard it. Unless you're really, really asleep and your eyes are open while you sleep, you just heard it. But what are you going to do about it? Do you act on it? Do you put it into practice? And Jesus, all through the book of Luke, I'm seeing... And all through Scripture, it tells us that it's not enough to hear the Word of God. We must also act on it. Does your life glorify the Lord? Does it point others to Him? For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Is that your testimony? Could you say that? Can I say that? We need to examine our hearts, examine our lives and see, God, are, you, are we allowing you to use us? Or are we just hearing the Word of God? Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be together this morning. We thank you for your word that's so clear. We just thank you for the the teaching and the the word of God that we can look at and and go through and just talk about and and reflect on and meditate on. Excuse me. And Father, I pray that as we examine our, each of us examine our lives. We can't examine anybody else's life. We can't point fingers at someone else and say they need to, no, it's all, we can only focus on ourselves. We have to look on our own life and focus on that because we're the only ones that can make things right with you. Lord, I pray that as we think through these things that we would think about how we are praying for other people. Are we lifting people up in prayer faithfully? And then is our life glorifying you? Is it pointing others to you? Help us, Lord, to live in a way that does so that in our death, it'll point others to you as well. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Stand with me if you would while Miss Donna plays uh, invitation. I'm going to give you the opportunity to
uh, respond to what the Lord's dealing with in your heart there in your pew or down front however you feel led to respond Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for uh, your faithful attendance, and uh, I pray that uh, this has been an encouragement and a challenge to you as well, and just that uh, the Lord would use what we're looking at in Philippians on, on Sundays and Luke on Wednesdays and James in Sunday school, and just, just, just pick a book, you know, so, uh, but I hope it's encouragement to you. I hope it's a challenge to you and draws you closer to Him. Uh, I hope you have a good afternoon. I apologize that it's only 11.56. Um, <laughs> You know, sing a couple of songs, we get to 12.01. <laughs> Don't expect this. Every, you don't know how that goes. It doesn't always work that way, but um, sometimes we can get out a little early. That's okay. You might can be the first one to the, is the 478 buffet still there? You can go down there and get you some casa or something, get you something to eat, but maybe you can get there. But uh, but thank you for being with us, and we're, we're, we're thankful to have you with us this morning. Um, but I, I know Brother Vern's back there. He's got his, he's, his head in the closet. He's a... Uh, looking for something i'm gonna get him to see if he'll close us in a word of prayer and then we'll be dismissed brother Vern, would you close us in a word of prayer please sir